the difference between an INFP A and an INFP T. It's quite easy to confuse yourself with INFP A and INFP T. You may think that they're the same, but just with a different last letter. Well, that's actually not the case. Their differences and similarities are beyond the letters or functions they have. In today's Bright Light video, we will explore those differences and get to know this personality type more. But before we get started, if you are new here, please do not forget to subscribe to our channel so that you can join a community where learning about psychology is welcomed and encouraged. You can also click the notification bell so that we can notify you whenever we post new videos online. Now that we've got that covered, let's get straight to the video. Let's first look at how INFPs behave with others versus when they are alone. When you consider INFPs as a whole, you can see how they tend to lift each other up before they do the same for themselves. If we pay close attention, we can also see that one sort of INFP is not only prepared to put others before oneself, but also is quite harsh on themselves. Turbulent mediators are those. Only 40% of INFP T's claim to feel at ease with who they are and what they stand for. 85% of assertive mediators reported the same, making this incredibly modest. You'll also notice a lot of INFPTs expressing self-dissatisfaction as a result of this. They grow a strong idealistic filter to evaluate where and how they need to improve in order to cope with it. This reveals any imperfections they perceive and motivates them to work more harder than they currently do. But achieving idealism is challenging. Mediators who encounter difficulty are more prone to overwork themselves and experience stress. If they don't accomplish their relentless and possibly unreasonable goals, they are prone to be harsh on themselves. Self-criticism is beneficial for everybody who experiences turbulence. However, the sensitivity and creative abilities of these people may magnify the damage caused by negative self-talk. Even a minor mistake could seem more catastrophic than it actually is. When they make a mistake, they are more inclined to think that they are faulty. Up next, we have the aspect of laziness. Turbulent mediators perceive themselves as being 85% more lethargic than assertive mediators, who are 66% more assertive. For instance, turbulent mediators are more likely than assertive mediators to describe themselves as lazy, but a neutral assessment may reveal that this is not entirely accurate. All other things being equal, turbulent people generally exert a lot of effort to make up for any perceived inadequacies. The adjective lazy doesn't usually apply. It is more likely that their negative perception of their work ethic is a result of their pessimistic outlook than it is on empirical fact. Now, let's go to how they see mistakes. Assertive mediators tend to believe that everyone makes errors occasionally. Thus, they are more inclined to see a mistake as a one-time accident or simple carelessness. It's unlikely that they will give any consideration, though. These temperaments typically view their shortcomings in the same light. Usually, they would like to spend their time deliberating positive ideas. Assertive mediators' idealistic and compassionate disposition is unaltered. Simply put, they tend to view everything more favorably, including their concern for other people and other things. Both handle stress differently, too. In comparison to 48% of turbulent mediators, about 87% of assertive mediators say they feel confidence in their ability to address problems that arise every day. Because they are driven by optimism and confidence, assertive mediators can devote a lot of energy to pursuing their humanistic goals. These temperaments are often good at inspiring hope and encouragement. However, if you have a habit of giving everything a positive review, it can be simple to ignore elements that need improvement. Rarely do those things that are disregarded get any notice. While turbulent mediators run the risk of disguising issues behind the facade that everything is going smoothly, assertive mediators run the risk of asking for too little. This also translates to their risk-taking tendencies. Mediators use their feeling personality attribute to guide their decisions. They choose for a viewpoint that places an emphasis on empathy and understanding for others. However, the finding of our study clearly show that assertive and turbulent mediators differ from one another in terms of how they manage their emotions and interact with others. When we look at their sensitivity levels, 63% of turbulent mediators, as opposed to 28% of assertive mediators, report crying often to very often. Turbulent mediators tend to experience overtly expressed emotions more frequently than their assertive counterparts. At first, Crying more frequently than other individuals might not seem like a positive thing. 
Any person who wants to learn can, however, benefit from any circumstance, and the majority of mediators are enthusiastic life students. It can be useful to be conscious of emotional expressiveness in order to relate to others' feelings. Through experience, one can learn something more quickly. If you have had similar issues, it might be simpler for you to listen sympathetically. Remorse is said to be experienced regularly by 90% of turbulent mediators compared to 56% of assertive mediators. A stigmatized quality that typically characterizes assertive personalities, particularly assertive mediators, is arrogance. Self-importance is not necessarily a quality that all forceful people possess. They occasionally may seem less invested than their ardent, turbulent peers. They have fewer life regrets and are less likely to feel guilty or apologize. This impression of arrogance is perhaps relative, as assertive mediators behave more subduedly. When compared to turbulent mediators, they could come out as arrogant when viewed in the context of the rest of humanity. Let's now visit their workplace. 76% of turbulent mediators, as opposed to 51% of assertive mediators, think that their personality is substantially different from how they present it at work. In general, assertive mediators present a more genuine image of themselves. They are very comfortable being themselves. Because of their self-assurance, it is less significant for them to base their choices and attitude on other people's perceptions. These personalities may be more likely to act independently since they are less susceptible to peer pressure. As a result of their independence, assertive mediators might be in a position to work effectively without being hindered by the responsibilities that others might try to add. Independence can become an issue if it is abused. They could forget to ask for or accept advice from others at crucial times. According to poll results that account for all personality types, assertive mediators are less likely than the average person to ask for help even when they do. 61% of assertive mediators feel it easy to make big decisions without seeking input from anybody first, compared to 36% of turbulent mediators. Opinions have a greater impact on turbulent mediators. Most turbulent personality types have a concern for other people's viewpoints, but it's possible that turbulent mediators are more acutely aware of this concern. They constantly check in with other people as a result of their turbulence, the sensitivity that characterizes their kind, and their changeable interests. They frequently seek out the feedback of people who are close to them in an effort to allay or confirm their persistent doubts. Turbulent mediators are people-focused individuals with residual uncertainty who naturally seek the support and input of others. These personalities value opinions, thus they are also more prone to listen when people speak. Both mediator types consider themselves to be good listeners, but turbulent mediators are more inclined to practice the skill because they value other people's viewpoints. Compared to their assertive counterparts, turbulent mediators are more idealistic in the way they approach their work. This, however, can also cause INFPTs to be quite harsh on themselves. Assertive mediators, on the other hand, find it simpler to accomplish humanistic objectives and provide hope and encouragement through positive impulses. Despite the fact that turbulent mediators feel their negative emotions considerably more intensely than assertive mediators, this can aid them in improving their ability to empathize. Assertive mediators are less influenced by other people's opinions when it comes to feedback, which may help them be more independent, but also makes them less inclined to pay attention to insightful remarks and perspectives. Due to their strong regard for other people's perspectives, turbulent mediators may be better listeners and team players, even if they have an introverted personality. That ends our video for today. We hope you have learned a thing or two. If you did, please like this video and leave a comment on the comment section below. We would love to hear your thoughts, suggestions, and reactions. If you want similar videos, do not forget to subscribe to us and click the notification bell so you can get notified whenever we post new videos. Until next time, bye.